This is our uh, first video in the statistical inference series. So we're going to be working through a couple, a couple of cool topics in statistical, if, statistical inference. Um, we have a lot of videos, obviously, on probability. Um, and I like to think of inference, or many people think of inference as kind of moving in the opposite direction as, as probability. So probability, you have you know, some um, random variable, let's say, P. And then uh, you basically try to figure out what probability, you, you take this as given and you try to figure out the probabilities of observing different types of data. So, you know, how many, you know, how many successes in, you know, end trials, what's the probability of this, what's the probability of that. Inference reverses the direction. Um, so basically we observe some data and we uh, don't take the distribution as given. We we, we, we maybe kind of know the distribution, but we don't know the parameters, and we try to infer what the parameters are. So, you know, given the data, you know, what is the underlying n? What is the underlying p? Whereas in probability, these things were, were given. So that's kind of the idea. Inference is, you know, has a lot of real-life applications. We're dealing with real data, and we're basically trying to figure out uh, what the true parameters are. Um, but it still has uh, a lot of theory that we... So, uh, a little bit of theory, a lot of theory that we kind of use... Um, to like approach these real life problems. So today we're talking about uh, what we're gonna call the method of moments estimator. Um, estimators are a big part of inference. Uh, they let us estimate what the true parameters are. We're gonna dive into one here. And method of moments is perhaps like the simplest step one um, sort of idea uh, sort of for, for estimating uh, parameters. And I wrote the three steps here. Um, they're pretty simple. We start by just writing our moments in terms of our parameters. Then step two is we flip that, we solve for the parameters in terms of the moments. Then step three is plug in the sample moments. And that, that might all sound super confusing, um, which is why we're going to do an example here. This is all described in the book, which is linked in the description. We're going to do the same example that's in the book. Sometimes it's easier just if you see it on video, but you know, refer there for, for more if you have questions and you want to dive into it deeper. So let's say that... Um, X has a gamma distribution, and the two parameters are A and lambda, okay? So, you know, we're observing a bunch of data. We know it follows a gamma. We don't know what A and lambda are, and we want to find, um, uh, A hat, MOM, and lambda hat, MOM. The hats in statistical inference generally just mean a predictor for something. So hat A means a predictor for A, an estimator for A. Estimator is better word than predictor. And this mom underscore just means method of moments. So this is saying the method of moments estimator for A, the method of moments estimator for, for lambda. Okay. So um, let's just get right to it. Basically, we, we want to estimate our true, uh, our true, actually, I'm, I'm going to rewrite this a little bit. Let's say x1, x2, dot, dot, dot. Uh, so we basically have a bunch of data, x1, x2, all the way to xn, and this data is iid, and it's all coming from a gamma distribution with parameters a and lambda. We want to find the estimators for a and lambda using kind of the data we observe. Okay, so this is kind of the general idea of inference. So let's follow these three steps, right? The first step is to write our moments in terms of our parameters, okay? And we're going to use, I'm going to write it over here, we're going to use u k as the k mu mu sub k as the kth moment. Field space and this equals. Um, remember the kth moment of a distribution is just the expected value of that distribution to the k. So we're going to use u sub k to the, as a, as a kth moment. Here we have two moments. Uh, there's two parameters, so we're going to need to write out two moments because we're going to do a system of equations and solve for them. So we'll start with our first moment mu mu one. Um, this is the mean, and the mean of a gamma, you know, if you recall from probability, is just A over lambda. I'm going to do this kind of being inconsistent. Just checking my notes to make sure get this right. Okay. And uh, mu2 is A over lambda squared plus A squared over lambda squared. Okay, so... You're probably wondering, um, you're probably wondering, I know mu1, that's the mean of a gamma, that's a divided by lambda, whatever. Mu2, the second moment of a gamma, how do we get this so easily, a over lambda squared? 
a squared over lambda squared. Well, this is a kind of separate derivation, but it, it's pretty straightforward. So recall that um, the variance of x is equal to this right x squared, which is just a variance of x squared, right? Oops. That in. So the second moment minus the mean squared, that's the variance. We can just flip this. So variance of x plus the mean of x squared is equal to the second moment. I just added, you know, move this to this side. Um, so our second moment is just the variance plus the mean squared. In this case, the variance of a gamma is a over a lambda squared. The variance of a gamma a lambda is a over lambda squared. And we just add the mean, you know, the mean. Sorry, the mean squared, and the mean squared is a over lambda, so we get a squared over lambda squared. So that's what we have our, our you know, um, our two moments. Now we have two moments, both in terms of the parameters, that's step one. Step two is solve for the parameters in terms of the moments, okay? So um, we want to get two equations, one for a and one for lambda. To do that, we're going to do substitution. This is going back to algebra one. Um, we can write lambda mu one equals a, right? We just multiply by lambda. And then we can plug that into this equation. Okay, so um, I'm going to write mu2 equals plugging in mu lambda, lambda mu1 every time I see a, lambda mu1 over lambda squared plus lambda squared mu1 squared over lambda squared. Uh, these lambda squareds cancel, this lambda cancels, and this becomes not squared, so we can get mu uh, 2 equals mu 1 over lambda plus mu 1 squared. And now it's just a matter of, you know, we subtract the mu 1 squared and then we flip the lambda and, you know, the other side. So we get lambda equals mu 1 over um, mu 2 equals mu 1 squared. And again, just subtracting mu 1 squared from both sides and then dividing. Just make sure I did that right. Awesome. So that's our lambda. And again, we just, you know, we started from our, this is a minus sign. Sorry, I'm being messy. We started from our, you know, two, our moments written in terms of our parameters when we solved. And, you know, since we have uh, mu, or since we have the lambda in terms of the moments, we can easily plug that in here because we know a is just lambda times mu1. So we can immediately say that a is just this times mu1, which is mu1 squared over mu2. Awesome. So that is step two, right? Solve parameters and first moments. Step three is very easy. We just plug in the sample moments. Um, remember the sample moment, so uh, when we say sample moment, we can actually just define it like this. Uh, we say the sample moment, uh, so the little arrow indicates sample, it's the estimator for the cake moment. The sample moment of the cake moment, the sample cake moment is equal to, um, we take all the data, in this case I'm doing uh, i starting at zero, but I should just say put all i. Um, so we just take all of our data. Wait, I think I have to divide by something. Um, okay, so we take all our data, we uh, sum it up. Uh, we sum it up, oops, this is not two, this is k, sorry. We raise it to the kth power. So we take all our data, raise it to the kth power, sum it up, and we divide by the number of things in the sample, right? So for instance, the simplest example is when k equals one. So the, the sample first moment is just, you add up all the xi's, raise to the power of one, do nothing, and divide by n. That's the sample mean, right? You add up everything, you divide by n, and you get the sample mean, which is the estimate for, um, the sample mean is the, is the estimate for the mean, right? That's the moment estimation for the mean. Um, and it kind of makes sense. Like if you want to estimate x squared, right? If you want to estimate the second moment, you just uh, take all the terms, square it, and then, you know, end, end up dividing by, by n. So this is our, you know, simple estimator for the kth moment. 
And now we have our estimates. We, we want estimates for lambda and a. We have them in terms of things that are easy to estimate, so we can just you know make them make these estimates. Um, and now that you know these are estimates, we we have uh, lambda and a are the method of moments estimates. So I know I did a couple of quick steps there. So let's talk about you know what this means. Um, we know from the start that mu one and mu two are way easier to estimate than a and lambda. We know to estimate mu1, we just add up all the values and divide by n in, in the sample. We know to estimate mu2, we add up all of the, the squared values, divide by n. So we know how to estimate these two things, right? We want to estimate a and lambda. So we solve for a and lambda in terms of mu1 and mu2, and then once lambda and a are solved in terms of mu1 and mu2, well, we know how to estimate these things, mu1 and mu2, and a and lambda are just a function of the things we know how to estimate, so we just plug in our estimates for mu1 and mu2 and, and uh, get our estimates for a and lambda. So that's kind of the intuition behind method moments. We know how to estimate one thing. We want to estimate another. We, want, we know how to estimate moments. We want to estimate parameters. Solve for, for parameters in terms of moments and plug in our estimates. The way you would actually check this, and we do this in the in the chapter link, is you would generate a bunch of data from a gamma. In the book we do gamma uh, five seven. Generate a bunch of data. So we know that uh, a is five and lambda is seven. To generate like a thousand data points. Plug in our estimates for, uh, you know, calculate our estimates for mu hat one, so that's just the mean of this, right? The estimate for, you know, mu hat two, sorry, the estimate for mu hat two is just all these values squared, then the mean of that. Um, so you just calculate those estimates and plug them in, right? You plug in your estimate for mu hat one, plug in your estimate for mu hat two, minus your estimate for mu hat one squared, and you're going to get your estimate for lambda, it's probably going to be close to seven. And if you do the same thing for A, it's probably going to be close to 5 because the estimates are, are pretty good, especially as, as N gets higher. Um, so again, I, I, you know, this is how we solve it. I think it really helps if you have R, Python, or some other statistical computing package to actually do this out. And we do it in the book, so you can look at the link below. Um, and again, you just generate the data. We have way easier tools for uh, figuring for, for estimating the, the moments than we do the parameters. So when we have the parameters in terms of the moments, we can plug in our estimates for the moments. And then that gives us restfulness for the parameters. So hope you enjoyed this. Method moments, again, is kind of a, an intro uh, estimator. It's pretty simple, even though this might not seem super simple. In the next video, we're going to talk about a more popular but more complicated estimator, which is maximum likelihood estimation. So we'll see you then.